Hello everybody, welcome back. A couple of you wanted me to talk more about retinoic acid, tretinoin, which I thought was a great idea since there is so much confusion surrounding retinoids in general, but especially retinoic acid. Now, when we talk about retinoids, retinoids is an umbrella term for all vitamin A's. Retinol, retinol, retinaldehyde, and retinoic acid are all retinoids. Retinoic acid is tretinoin retin-A. I personally have been using retin-A for about three years now. I do not want to be without it. It has done wonders for my skin, which is why it saddens me some that it is so misunderstood. But hopefully in this video, I can help clear some of the confusion surrounding retinoic acid and clear up some of the myth surrounding retinoic acid. And by the way, if you're new here, I'm Claudia. Thank you so much for being here. I'm really happy you're here. So without further ado, let's get into the video. Now, the myth I hear most frequently is that retinoic acid thins our skin. I believe this myth, like probably most myths surrounding retinoic acid, grew out of a misunderstanding of retinoic acid. However, companies trying to sell their own vitamin A derivatives are more than happy to spread this myth. Retinoic acid thinning our skin is partially true. Retinoic acid thins the stratum corneum, the top layer, the outside layer of our skin, which is basically dead skin. However, it thickens the epidermis. And not just that, it goes into the dermis and there helps facilitate collagen and elastin production. So basically, retinoic acid thins dead skin, but thickens living skin. And I have looked at study after study showing just that. For example, this overview of several short-term as well as long-term double-blind placebo-controlled studies shows that retinoic acid improved lines and wrinkles, hyperpigmentation, and facilitated epidermal thickening. This article right here, as well as the comprehensive dermatological drug therapy book, which is basically the holy grail for dermatologists, states that one of the pronounced effects of retinoids is on epidermal hyperplasia or epidermal thickening. On top of increasing epidermal thickness, vitamin A upregulates genes for collagen type 1 as well as collagen type 3. And you can see right here in these slides the effect of retinol as well as retinoic acid on epidermal thickening. And interestingly enough, both of them had an effect on epidermal thickening, with retinoic acid definitely having a greater effect. So retinoic acid or retinoids in general do not thin our skin. They exfoliate the stratum corneum. So they thin the stratum corneum. Again, dead skin, but they thicken the epidermis. And again, in the dermis, they facilitate collagen and elastin production. Another thing I hear often, which is not quite true, is that retinoic acid makes us photosensitive. Now, as I said earlier, retinoic acid exfoliates our stratum corneum, the outer layer of our skin, dead skin. So therefore, it might make us slightly more sensitive to UV radiation, but not any more than using any other exfoliant, such as alpha hydroxy acids or beta hydroxy acids. But if you are using retinoic acid, of course, you want to make sure to wear sunscreen. When we use retinoic acid, we are repairing a lot of accumulated photo damage. So if we use our retinoic acid and repair all this photo damage and then go out into the sunshine without any protection, that would be silly. We're going one step forward and two steps back. So always, 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 if you use retinoic acid or if you do not use retinoic acid, wear your sunscreen because really UV radiation is responsible for up to 90% of visible changes we associate with skin aging. So sunscreen, very important, whether you use retinoic acid or not. But retinoic acid by itself 
does not make us any more sun sensitive than again using any other exfoliant. And then along those lines, I also hear we should never ever use retinoids, including retinoic acid, during the day because they become toxic or who knows what else is going to happen. Now, retinoic acid you do not want to use while out in the sunshine because UV radiation renders it inactive. That's it. It doesn't become toxic or anything. It just becomes inactive once it gets exposed to sunshine. However, retinol and retinaldehyde you can wear during the day as well as at night. Both of those do not become inactive through UV radiation. They also don't become toxic or anything else. So retinoic acid wear at night or when you're not exposed to UV radiation and retinol and retinaldehyde you can wear day and night. Again, they don't become inactive, toxic or anything else. Something else I hear quite frequently is that retinoic acid is inflammatory. Now, when you first start using retinoic acid, it might seem as if, in fact, it is inflammatory since we're going through what is called retinization, which is a period in which the skin gets used to the vitamin A. And this retinization might leave your skin dry, irritated, itchy, and even flaky. However, retinoic acid is actually anti-inflammatory, which is why it is used successfully in the treatment of inflammatory acne. This extensive review of tretinoin's immunomodulating properties suggests that it possesses five different properties inhibiting the formation of comedones and blemishes, which can be considered anti-inflammatory. On top of these five anti-inflammatory properties, it also possesses 17 other potential activities that may be beneficial in lessening inflammatory cascades of acne. So retinoic acid is actually not inflammatory, but it is anti-inflammatory, which is why even people with sensitive skin or rosacea prone skin can use retinoic acid. And I used to actually have very sensitive skin and I had very bad rosacea. And I would have never ever thought that I could actually use retinoic acid. So at the end of this video, I'm going to tell you how I successfully started using retinoic acid without any side effects. This next one I hear all the time. And that is, you cannot use any other actives such as vitamin C, alpha hydroxy acid, beta hydroxy acid with your retinoic acid. Now let's start with vitamin C. New studies actually show that when vitamin A is combined with vitamin C, not only does the vitamin C help stabilize the vitamin A, but it also increases its efficacy. So there is nothing wrong with combining vitamin A with vitamin C. And in fact, a lot of companies are jumping on this right now and are producing products containing both ingredients, vitamin A as well as vitamin C. Now, allascorbic acid, which is the most commonly used form of vitamin C, can be slightly irritating. It is quite acidic. So if you are just starting out with retinoic acid and you are going through retinization, you might not want to use allascorbic acid because it could further irritate you. But once you are used to your retinoic acid, there is no reason why you cannot use your vitamin C with your vitamin A, even in the same treatment. Personally, I use my vitamin A and my vitamin C at night because during the day I use copper peptides. So you can use them both together at night or you could use your vitamin C in the morning and your vitamin A at night. But again, not only do they help stabilize each other, but vitamin C actually increases the efficacy of vitamin A. And as far as alpha hydroxy acids and beta hydroxy acids, same thing. There is no reason why you cannot continue to exfoliate when you are using retinoic acid. But again, if you're just starting out with your retinoic acid and you are going through retinization, then you might want to lay off a bit on your alpha hydroxy acids and your beta hydroxy acids. But once you're used to your retinoic acid, there is no reason why you can't exfoliate. 
Personally, I use an alpha hydroxy acid three times a week, no problems. You can use it in the morning and then use your retinoic acid at night, or if your skin can handle it, you can do it all at night. But again, there is no reason why you cannot use other actives when you use retinoic acid. And then lastly, and this is one that really scared me when I first started using retinoic acid, is that retinoic acid is toxic and could possibly cause death. Now, of course, I do not want to put anything on my skin that could possibly cause death. So I went down the rabbit hole of research for this one and I found the one study this myth is based on. This study was done on 1,100 veterans, so quite a big sample size. And these veterans were averaging 71 years of age. Half of these veterans applied retinoic acid twice a day. The other half used a placebo cream. Over the course of the study, it became apparent that subjects using the tretinoin cream were more likely to die. However, research could not conclude that there was a casual association of tretinoin use with death. The researchers went on to say that we cannot conclude this trial provides appropriate grounds for hesitating to use topical tretinoin in clinical practice in the absence of additional evidence. In response to the study, the clinical professor of dermatology at Jefferson Medical College in Philadelphia, Dr. Webster, called this study unbelievable because it was the sole study that contradicted 40 years of apparent safe use. He noted that vitamin A in general was very useful in cancer therapy and that plasma vitamin A levels did not change when tretinoin was applied to the skin. He went on to say that applying vitamin A topically is about as dangerous as eating a carrot. So as Dr. Webster pointed out, this study was the sole study contradicting 40 years of apparent safe use of the topical application of tretinoin and the study was never duplicated. And as Dr. Webster pointed out, tretinoin, retinoic acid, can be immensely helpful in cancer therapy. In a 2018 study, a group of women over the age of 60 used 0.05% retinoic acid three times a week for six months. These women had been diagnosed with actinic keratosis, which is a precancerous skin condition that can develop into squamous cell carcinoma. After six months, there was a 60% reduction in actinic keratosis. Retinoic acid's ability to cure actinic keratosis is what got me hooked in the first place. When I first started using retinoic acid three years ago, I had a lot of actinic keratosis pop up on my forehead and my temples from decades of sun abuse. I would go to a dermatologist, he would freeze a couple of spots off and a couple of weeks later, they would show up somewhere else. So eventually he gave me a little tube, which was basically chemotherapy in a tube. When I read the side effects, I said, no way am I putting this anywhere near my body. So I started using retinoic acid after three months, all my actinic keratosis disappeared and it has not returned. So like I said, that right there sold me. But since then, I have seen incredible results. My skin has gotten much more resilient. It has gotten thicker. Fine lines and wrinkles have improved. I feel that my skin is a lot more hydrated and also less reactive. So I don't ever want to be without my retinoic acid. But as I said, I used to have very, very sensitive skin and very bad rosacea. So I never ever thought that I could ever use retinoic acid. I tried about 20 years ago and it did not go too well. But when we moved to Italy about three years ago, 
you can get retinoic acid over the counter here. 0.05% is all we have, but that's perfect. I thought, what do I have to lose? I got a tube and I started using it. I started with a pea-sized amount one time a week at night. I went one time a week for one month and I saw no irritation. And because I didn't see any irritation, it was actually quite difficult to be patient, but I stuck it out. I waited one month. Then I went to two times a week, something like Monday and Thursday to have some time in between. Once more, I waited for one month, no irritation. Then I went to three times a week, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, one month, no irritation, four times a week and so on. So it took me seven months to be able to use retinoic acid every single night. But I'm really glad I went so slowly because now I can use it every single night, no irritation. And like I said, it has done wonders for my skin and I don't ever want to be without it. So if you are trying to get used to retinoic acid, I would say take your time, go very slowly. It is something you want to use for the long run and you're not going to see any results very quickly. It's going to take a couple of months. However, studies have shown that even using retinoic acid just a couple times a week can give you results. So even if you never build up your tolerance to using it every single night, you can still get results by using it two or three times a week. But like I said, go very slowly. Think about this being something you're going to use for the long run. Another thing you can do is buffer your retinoic acid, meaning you apply a moisturizer first and then your retinoic acid and this will lessen the efficacy slightly, but it will also make it less irritating. This is actually something I have to do on my neck. I can use retinoic acid on my chest, on my face, on my hands, everywhere but my neck. If I put retinoic acid on my neck for several nights in a row, my neck does not like it. So I buffer it. I put on moisturizer and then the retinoic acid on top. Another thing you can do is start with retinol then work your way up to retinol, retinaldehyde, and then to retinoic acid. That is actually something I did as well. Years ago, I used retinol. I used it for quite a while. Honestly, I didn't see the same results as I am seeing with retinoic acid. But as you saw in some of the slides, even using retinol can help with epidermal thickening. So everything is better than nothing. It might take longer to see results. But again, this is something we want to use for the long run. There is no rush. And of course, I wouldn't be me if I wouldn't mention nutrition. I really think what we put in our body has a big impact on our skin. And I truly believe the lack of nutrition 20 years ago, many of you know I was anorexic. I believe the lack of nutrition back then was a big reason why I couldn't handle Retin-A. So really paying attention to what we put in our body making sure we're eating a mostly anti-inflammatory diet and we're getting enough essential fatty acids, healthy fats, those sort of things, I truly think can make a difference as far as not just the health of our skin, but can also make a difference of us being able to handle Retin-A. I know for me personally, really making sure I get enough omega-3s in my diet, which are anti-inflammatory. Most of us get too many omega-6s and omega-9s in our diet. And though those are essential fatty acids, they tend to be pro-inflammatory versus omega-3s are anti-inflammatory. So I have really tried to pay attention to get enough omega-3s in my diet. I eat a lot of chia seed, flax seed, hemp seed. I also take an omega-3 supplement, which I will link down below. And I really believe that paying attention to getting enough omega-3s in my diet has made a big difference as far as the health of my skin information in general, but also me being able to handle Retin-A. So I hope that this was helpful. If you have any questions or comments, of course, please leave them down below. I always love to hear from you and I really always appreciate the time you spent with me. Thank you so much for being here. Until next time, bye.